Hello everyone! Welcome to another StarCraft 2 live session. Just chilling out and like the barely got this little little chevron at the bottom of my icon. Been hanging out in this, you know, high 40s area. Got 24 in the bonus pool, which should mean I'm actually more like 47, 24. Yeah, I'd be tied for 46 if I spent my bonus pool. Uh, mostly playing a little under 50%. Uh, though I've had some, I feel like I'm having dumb losses. Um, you know, the one thing about my TVP going from like 40% up to like 60, 65, maybe even 70% win rate is that my phone is ringing. I'll answer you later. Um, it's that it's forced uh, my MMR higher, which means I'm facing tougher Zerg and Terran opponents, even though my Zerg and Terran haven't gotten better. Uh, and the one thing I've noticed is, if you play better opponents, it will make you better. Because if you're even slightly analytical, if you start losing a lot more, you're going to start finding mistakes in your play a lot easier. Where if you're placing easier opponents, you'll have mistakes in your play, but it won't be exposed because you're actually winning. So, I don't know, it's a small thing. I think that's true with like anything with sports as well. If you play someone who's like way better than you, you actually improve a lot faster than if you play someone who's terrible or someone who's at your level. I send out this guy across map. I had to get that guy out early, especially on uh, Metalopolis since it's such long, long rush distance. Uh, it's hard to block 15 hatch if you don't do it, other, if you do it any other way. And I like to block it super early so I can get that engineering bay blocked down, which is uh, my new go-to thing here. I'm pretty much loving it. It's cost me some matches, but in analysis I think I just kind of make mistakes in those, and it's a learning experience. Like for instance, if he doesn't try to 15 hatch, you gotta cancel this and get your command center down immediately. So I'm gonna build it for a little while, and then I'm gonna go up his ramp and check and see what's going on. So yeah, I don't even see an overlord coming. There's an overlord. But let's see if he's already gone pool first or not. He has, and he just placed it now, so I feel it's pretty safe now. Unfortunately, the overlord spots a lot quicker on this map, just since you, you spawn so close to your natural. Oops, I'm not mean to send two after that guy. Oh well. What's going on? Not enough mineral. SCV ready. Set this up in a hockey. Go ahead. Not enough mineral. Some guys on gas. Big job. As long as I cancel this in time, I think the one thing it gains me is a faster orbital. That's what you lose out on if you don't do it. It doesn't really make anything else faster because I'm canceling it so late, but uh, orbital command definitely get faster. Man, if you send those links out quickly, this thing's not close to dying. I built this command center one later than I normally do. I usually stall my SCV production a touch. But luckily that engineering bay buys me time. Base is under attack. I'm gonna go factory. I got the money, but I can't really move out yet because I don't have this done. Now I think I can move out. Oh crap, those are fast roaches. In the rear with the gear. Bad news. 
It's giving me time to get this bone crap though, which is really nice. I appreciate this. So he had an opportunity there to be kill me, I'm pretty sure. And he kind of missed out on it. Armed and ready. Go ahead. SCB ready. Okay. So we can open a Banshee first. He should be behind in tech. I'm actually contemplating just doing a bunch of Banshees here. In fact, let's do it. Probably need one more gas. Even though I got a bit of a gas store, Banshees can spend it pretty quick. Shit. I mean, to do that. Oh well. I think I transferred out too many SCVs here. SCV Should watch for an Idus actually. <laughs> Add on complete. Cloak's not going to help much, is it? Hmm. 
Well, that was a very messy game. So. Replay saved. Definitely want to take a look at this. It all stemmed from having a little extra cash that I wasn't used to, which allowed me to get an early factory. Um, I'm going to hang on for one second here. All right, I just did the entire analysis, and Fraps crashed, and I just lost it all. So I can do the analysis again, but this time I actually know the answers because <laughs> I was just kind of uh, just kind of trying to figure out what went wrong or what went right. And now I already did the analysis once. I can go straight to the key points here. Um, I can show you the mistakes I made and the problems it caused and kind of the reactions I made and why I made them. So, I'm already gone too far. I'll show you my blunder right here. It was, it was minor and it was hard to spot, but it was, it was a blunder. So I throw down my engineering bay at, uh, actually let's go back to two minutes, let's kind of watch it. So normally I build my command center on 15, right? But I'm doing an engineering bay block, so that's going to slow it down a bit. So here I am at 14 supply, here to my 15th, 15 supply. Now this is normally when I throw down my command center, but I spent that 125 on engineering bay. 125 on engineering bay. I just throw my words sometimes when I talk too fast. Uh, so normally, or what you want to do if you're engine bay blocking is throw down the command center on 16. And you can see sometimes, depending on what you're chasing drone-wise, throwing down your command center now could stall you at 16 of 19 for like, not long, but maybe two or three seconds. Um, you won't be able to get the next SCV up. Forget about that. You don't need that extra SCV. What you need is this command center at 16. Uh, so minor problem here, but it turned into, it just changed the whole landscape of the game here. Um, I actually built the 17th SCV first. So now I'm at 17 of 19 and throwing down my command center now. I still got it pretty good. It was only like 20 minerals there, but I built the 17th SCV first. Don't do that. Build 16th SCV. If it stalls your SCV production, it's okay. If it stalls your 17th SCV, that's okay. Just want to get that command center down at 16 of 19. So now we're going to go forward and we're going to see what problems this causes. And these are like the minor things, like when you're playing with a build, you want to look at, like, just, you want to smooth out a build. Like, have a start with an idea, work on it, and then say, what are the problems here? Like, why do I have this much gas this early? I don't need this gas. I don't need to store for any reason. So, I'll take my Vespian Geyser later, and now I can afford this extra thing. And, like, once you get it nice and smooth, you'll be spending up all your money, and things will start to go great. So, here I am. I have my... I had my 19th S or my 20th SCV queued up, but you don't want to do that when you do the intra-bay block because you can actually go straight into your orbital at 19. You can see I have the back up to, sorry. <laughs> Spoiler alert. You can see I have the money for the orbital, so you just cancel this and go straight to an orbital command. Um, sorry, it's going to be planetary fortress first. I'm going to have enough gas. I'm going to have enough minerals, obviously. And then you don't have to build your 20th SCV, you can actually afford your orbital. However, since I built that 17th SCV, this command center is going to be later, which means I'm going to have even more money. So here it finishes late because I built it on 17 instead of 16. And I build the orbital, and I still have 220 minerals in the bank. Well, you think, well, that's not too bad, because this like, barracks is about to finish. You can spend 150 of it in an orbital, right? But, you got another 100 minerals hanging out up, up here. So this goes down. I cancel it. There's the 94 minerals I get back. Now look at me. I got 350 minerals, and I got nothing to spend it on. I can spend 150 right here. It leaves me with 200. What do I normally get next? Uh, my low ground bunker, my third and fourth gas, and then my factory. 
I cannot build my bunker. I cannot build my third and fourth gas because I can't take the low ground yet. This is owned by Zerglings right now. Until this fortress is just about done, he owns this area. And anything I build on the low ground is just going to be a dead SCV. So I built this command center on 17 instead of 16. And it made my command center late. And what did I gain from it? Money I can't spend. That's all I got from it. So I built that ore bill. I still got 200 in the bank. I don't know what to do with it. So that's why I actually built the factory way out of order. I just, like, well, I got money to spend. Uh, my next thing I need to do is the supply depot here and the bunker here. But I'm not ready to move this out, so I can't build the supply depot. I can't build anything on the low ground for the bunker. After that's third and fourth gas. I can't do lows because there's a low ground. So I'll go to the very next step, which is factories. That's why my factory moves so fast. And if I just built my command center in 16, none of this would have happened. I would have had less stored up money and was spending it on the orbital which just kind of worked out nice and perfect. So you might say, well having extra money, is that really a problem? Well, remember I sacrificed something to get that extra money and that was timing on this uh, planetary fortress. So since the fortress, since, sorry, Sacrifice the timing at the command center, and since the command center late was late, the fortress was late. And since the fortress was late, building stuff on the low ground was late. And now all of a sudden I'm dead. Um, this is a three row trush, which is something that's only ever used in TVP, or sorry, in ZVP. But if they do it against me, it kills me. Even if I didn't do the injury block and I was like perfectly timed, this still typically kills me. Seven row trash, no problem. I can get the bunker done in time. But if he has shoves with his first three, they get here so early. Yeah, they're just three roaches, but they get here so early that I can't get this bunker up. He can go right to the top of my ramp, blow his way in, and there's nothing I can do. The only thing I got to defend with is SCVs. And unless I get like a money surround on them where I have them all surrounded individually by SCVs, I'm going to lose almost all my SCVs trying to kill three roaches. So here he arrives and I die. If he's smart, which he isn't. All he has to do is stop this bunker from going up. Um, he could pick off this SCV. I got all these SCVs out here like for desperation defense because basically I have to get this bunker up. So I'm waiting for him to like, I'm waiting to attack him if he comes into range. I'm waiting to replace this SCV if he snipes it. But I'm more or less dead. Um, I even lost my one Marine. Somehow. Oh, he got high ground vision with the Zergling so this Roach just could snipe it. So yeah, uh, kill this and he wins the game. He doesn't kill it, so he doesn't win the game. So he's kind of going around behind, and I think this is pretty cute on my part. It's awesome. I, I know I can like feel, let's look, go back and look at my vision here. I can see him dicking around like on the on the over hey, here. I saw him moving roaches head. over there. I can see him kind of hanging out in this area. I can see him moving down. It's like. You can see what's happening, right? He's going to run by this way. So I can block him off by throwing any structure here. But do I do it? No. I wait. I wait. He's under attack. And I wait. And I wait. Now I see them, and now I throw it down. <laughs> uh, given he could probably one-shot it. I mean, remember, supply when you build a structure, it doesn't start at zero hit points. It gives it 10% hit points to start. So it starts at 40. So maybe it can't. You can do 64 damage. Okay, maybe I waited a little too long, but <laughs> I basically I let him come into Fortress Rain first, and then it gives me these extra shots. I guess he couldn't one shot it because he tried there. If I was even cuter, I should have built it over here. <laughs> Wait till his roaches get all the way into this zone and throw down a, a supply depot, then he'd be completely stuck. Uh, he'd either have to go this way into my base, which he would die, or he'd have to flee this way out of my base, which he would die. So. I thought that was kind of fun. Free Roach. It's awesome. I guess he had them queued into my base, assuming we've already busted through. Remember, the one nice thing about uh, sending Zerg into an all-in is none of them ever expect a fortress. They never see fortress here. They, it's the last thing on their mind. They can scout this engineering bay. It doesn't matter. They're not going to think you're going to build a fortress. So it throws her all in off. All of a sudden, I'm like, whoa, I can't bailing bust this supply to up here because I can't get by the fortress. Or, whoa, all of a sudden, these roaches, they're not going to have free reign on, on Marines because they can't get by the fortress. Um, 
Yeah, so then the last part of this analysis I want to cover is my decision making. Uh, because I built this on 17 and had the extra minerals, remember I built a, a factory early? So when I saw him come in, I'm like... Well, let me back up first. This is something I used to do in the past. When he would all in me, like, or, or when he go for some sort of bust and he spent all that money, all that gas on bailings or on roaches, I would think to myself, hmm, he probably doesn't have lair. He probably doesn't have... Yeah, he probably doesn't have lair. This is the, is the main point. So I could hit him with banshees. And what's the chances of him having Rasir or having mutas up this fast? Um, and that thought process mostly didn't work for me. So I'm like, well, I'm already attacking towards Starport. He's are still in tier one. Mm -hmm. I'll just go kill him. And then of course he's able to defend it, and I've just thrown away my lead. So now I'm just like, let's just take it easy. Um, I'll just accept this lead he's given me and continue towards my normal game plan to Ravens, and I should take it like later on because he gave me this lead. Let's not try to kill him right now because I might just let him back in the game. Uh, so that's my usual thought process. The difference this time was A, I had that really fast factory so I could get my star ports up even quicker, and B, was a really close air spawn, means my banshees are basically instantly going to be in this base. And of course the fact that he all ends me. Um, well, not all in, but he he went for a heavy push early on. Uh, makes it less likely that he's attacking hard. So that was my decision making for switching to Banshees. He comes and he sees that starport, and only then does he throw down an Evo chamber. Uh, he did have Lair done, but the odds of him like Spire takes forever to build, right? Only 100 seconds. It must have shortened that time. I remember that that. Spire taking forever to build way back in the day. But yeah, no Spire. And he's just building Evo Chamber now. And now I'm coming in, getting kills. I didn't cloak because he had an Overseer, but the Overseer is not here, so I might as well cloak and save some hit points on these Avanches. Yeah, there's no way they can die from these Queens, but they can still take damage. Why take damage when you don't have to? Uh, so the last thing I want to talk about in this analysis is target priority if you do get Banshees, get catch a Zergoth guard with Banshees. And this is something I don't really know myself. But what, first thing, killing Queens, I think that's always right, because that hurts him economically and it hurts his defense to Banshees. You're getting rid of his anti-air and you're getting rid of his ability to make Larva. But after that, it's kind of hard. It's like, should I try to prevent his ability to defend? Should I kill the Spire if he's building it? Should I kill the Evo Chamber? Should I kill Spore Colonies? Or should I ignore his defense and just get as many drone kills as I can and then head home? And I chose the latter and I think it was probably the wrong decision. I mean, it's still awesome. I'm still going to slaughter like so many drones. It's ridiculous. But I got two Banshees here. I got two more on the way. Uh, he's already spent up almost all his money on these on these four Spore Colonies. I could easily just snipe all four of these and and win the game. It's it's a decision making process whether you, it'll actually work. Now, had he had like 1,500 here, he can just keep canceling spore colonies that I'm about to kill and keep throwing up more and more and more spore colonies. Then all of a sudden, some of them complete and I have to flee home. And I'm like shit, that whole time I didn't kill any drones. So, it's a decision point. It's like, can I actually stop him from defending the banshees? If I can, let's stop him, let's end the game. If I can't, you know, if he already has a Spire like near completion, he's going to pulp a bunch of mutas, so forget it. Ignore the defense, go after drones. I chose the latter, probably wrong decision. But going after drones is never a terrible thing, it's still, you know, pretty awesome. Just killing as many as I can. Scoot and, scoot, and sh scoot and shooting here, but unfortunately I wasn't targeting, so they just all shot the spore. I probably could have killed these last four drones. Um, that, this is kind of entertaining. We bring up my, uh, we back up here. You can do it. So I'm building ravens, right? Because I was just going to transition to ravens. I figured these four banshees is all I'm going to use, and then you'll get defense, and then I'll transition back into my normal game. So I was getting ravens, but then he dropped a bunch of roaches into my base. So I'm like, oh, oh, cancel the ravens. So we, got, we need more banshees to defend against the roaches. So I cancel the ravens and I switch back to roaches. And I bring my other uh, banshees back. And I kill him. And I start killing him. And then he burrows. I'm like, oh, 
Whoops. <laughs> so now I cancel my new Banshees, and I switch back to making Ravens again. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have one production facility, which I've only been canceling. I haven't even actually built anything from it for ages, and I got 3,000 minerals in the bank. And of course, you know how I macro when I'm trying to micro. It's, it's, it's not a pretty task. I really should be building command centers, if nothing else, at this point. Or at least Marines command centers. But with the Raven out and, and his uh, drone count to 15, um, he just quits the game, and I think that's the right choice. But yeah, I basically didn't produce an offensive unit for like four minutes there, <laughs> so that's how you can gain 3,500 minerals 13 minutes into the game and still win the game outright. This is kind of cute, and I think it will work. Um, he had no spotter here that I can tell. No. So, yeah, I would have gotten some Hellions out, and... <laughs> These spore colonies can't shoot me. Here's Zerg player. That's why you position things like this. This is actually poorly positioned. Because I think I can get around there. Let's put something in the back of your minerals to cut the path, so you can know nothing can run around this way. And it makes it a little easier for your queen to, vend, to defend versus Hellions. Like, if you imagine this uh, Roach Worm being like right here. Then if I come in here with the Hellions and he moves over with the Queen, he attacks his Hellions. My Hellions only retreat path is right through the Queen or back out this way completely away from the drones to and still kind of in range of the Queen. But with the way it is now with nothing blocked, I'm over here shooting drones with my Hellions, he comes over the Queen, I move my Hellions over here. Now I'm still killing drones and I'm outside the range of the Queen. So you want to prevent this this harass mobility. So you want at least one structure uh, blocking the 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 runaround path behind the minerals. Same with your natural. I mean, put your spire here or something. You know. Anyways, that's the analysis. Kind of a different match, but key points. If you're going to take one thing away from this. If you're doing an engineering blade block at 16, oh sorry, if you're doing an engineering blade block, throw down your command start at 16, even if it stalls your SCV production a little bit. And it shouldn't. It should only stall your SCV production by one or two seconds. It's not a big deal. Because um, the fast command center is much more important than getting extra minerals you can't spend anyways. So with that, we will call it the end of this video. You can check the description thumbs up link there. You give me a thumbs up and a favorite and uh, subscribe and all that good stuff from my channel and I'll keep giving you cool links to the SC2 world. So thank you everyone and goodbye.